This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollar. So over the course of the years with Donald Trump in office, and even during the transition, there were corruption uh, issues. The, the inauguration committee is... There's been indictments there. There's an indictment after indictment after indictment after indictment of all these, th- this constellation of dum-dums who surround Donald Trump. Like a, like, a, like a satellite orbiting a planet. There's just dozens of people who were caught up on the take, grifting every moment of their life while working around Donald Trump because monkey see, monkey do. It, the, the signal was given early on that this is a cash grab, everybody. Let's make some profit. Donald Trump just completely ignoring the emoluments clause of the Constitution. Foreign governments, by the way, was not adjudicated in court. The Supreme Court said the question was moot because he's no longer president. And because Donald Trump was in complete control of the Justice Department, they didn't look into it. They didn't, they didn't uh, move forward with, with, with the case. I'm going to read a little bit from this political article because there is apparently an alternative report to the Mueller report that is going to be released that may, it may, we don't know, but it may contain new information that was not included in the report. As disappointed as I was with the way Robert Mueller handled the the rollout of the report, deciding to take no action, thinking that Congress had the, the, the medal to actually do something, very Pollyanna-ish, Pollyanna-ish, if if you will. I, I think Joe Biden, in a lot of ways, has that same attitude. He holds some nostalgic view of American politics, looking back on an age when bipartisanship could be reached, compromise could be reached. But that's not what we have now. We have a a, a cast of characters. Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene, Mo Brooks, Andy Biggs, Paul Gosar, who are dedicated to chaos, who are dedicated to literally physically threatening Democrats, their colleagues, their co-workers. The days of bipartisanship and, and waxing nostalgic, over. They are over. Uh, Let me read from this political article. Feds could release alternative Mueller report soon. Primary processing of compendium mentioned in Mueller's aides book should be complete next month, says court filing. An unpublished investigative compilation, sometimes referred to as the alternative Mueller report, has been located in Justice Department files and could be released soon, according to a letter filed in federal court Thursday. A top deputy to special counsel, Robert Mueller, Andrew Wiseman, revealed in a book he published last year that the team he headed prepared a summary of all its work, apparently including details not contained in the final report made public in 2019. Quote, at least for posterity, I had all the team members write up an internal report memorializing everything we found our conclusions and the limitations on the investigation and provided it to the other team leaders as well as had it maintained in our files, wrote Weissman in Where Law Ends inside the Mueller investigation. The reference prompted the New York Times. Now, this is great. This is why journalism matters. This is why a free and fair press matters because the New York Times jumped on this excerpt from the book and filed freedom of information requests to the Justice Department to to release this particular alternative Mueller report. The reference prompted the New York Times to submit a Freedom of Information Act request for the document in January and to follow up in July with a lawsuit in U.S. District Court in Manhattan. Lawyers from the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan told Judge Catherine Polk Faia in a letter Thursday that officials had figured out what document Weinstein was alluding to and had begun reviewing it for possible release. Quote, since plaintiff filed its complaint, defendant has located and begun processing this record and intends to release all non-exempt portions to plaintiff once processing is complete. Assistant U.S. Attorney Jennifer Jude wrote, 
Quote, defendant estimates that primary processing of the records will be complete by the end of January 2022, at which time defendant expects to send the record to several other DOJ components for consultation. Jude did not provide an estimate of how long those consultations could take, but proposed updating the court by mid-February. Now, <laughs> the, 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 the packed dockets uh, in all these disparate court cases involving Donald Trump and his wrongdoings don't move at a fast enough pace for me. That could be my impatience. It could also be that uh, there's a, a willingness to, sl to gum the works here. I don't know. That's not quick enough for me. February. The pledge to process the so-called alternative Mueller report is no guarantee that what's released will contain significant new revelations. The Justice Department can use a variety of exemptions to the Freedom of Information Act to shield parts of the document from disclosure, including by deeming it attorney work product or part of an internal deliberative process. Current DOG leaders could waive those exemptions, but releasing other content such as grand jury information could be more difficult due to legal restrictions because the grand jury uh, proceedings are secret. But we don't need the grand jury proceedings to be made public. And listen, again, if the Biden Justice Department shields this report from coming forward and heavily redacts it, what good is having Merrick Garland, a Democratic appointed attorney general? What good is seeking consequence for wild, rampant criminal misdeeds? All it will do is solidify in the minds of Americans that there are two justice systems, one for them and an entirely different one for us. Is that the message that Joe Biden wants to send? Is that the message Merrick Garland, a man who has dedicated his life to law and justice? Is that the message they want? I, I hope not. What do you think, though? I'd love to know. You can call, leave me a brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. You can email me daily at dollamore.com. Thank you, guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe. If you haven't liked this particular video yet, boop. Wait, that's not how it sounds. Click. <laughs> Click the like button. Comment below. Um, blah, blah, blah. Follow me on social media. I'm at Dollamore just about everywhere. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Dollamore. And if you get some value from what I do on a daily basis, I would appreciate it if you would consider supporting my work here on the platform. Not if you have to budget it in. Not if you're on a fixed income. Not that. My content will always be free. But if I do something that you appreciate and I bring you value, please consider supporting it. For $1.99 a month, you can click the join button below, become a channel member, or you head on over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast and uh, support my work there. Both are great ways to support what I'm doing. Again, moving to DC very shortly, uh, just the week after Christmas, I'll be on the road and uh, there is an evolution taking place. We are growing and we are going to be doing a whole bunch more because there's always something going on in DC. I love you guys. I will see you next time. Until I do, be genuine. Take care of one another.